Hi my dear students, today we are going to see unit 2, our Kashorina tree. This beautiful poem was written by Thorodath. This poem is uh, like a reminiscences, what do you mean by reminiscence? Which means recalling old memories, especially childhood memories. Here Thorodath recalls her old memories which she cherishes every day in her life. Thoradat is in France, the tree is in India which is Kashorina tree. Kashorina tree was written by Thoradat. Let us see short biography of Thoradat. Thoradat was a Bengali poet who wrote in English and French. The Dutt family was a family of distinguished intellectuals and poets. She was taught by excellent English tutors at home and later on the long stay in Europe and England. Thoreau, with all her exposure to an involvement in Western life and culture, loved the land of her birth and remained thoroughly Indian in her consciousness and sensibility. Her well-known collection of poems are Ancient Ballads and Legends of Hindustan which was written in 1882. Next one is uh, Chief Gleaned in French Fields that was written in 1875. Third one, Our Kashurina Tree, the most well-known poem of Thoradat. So, now we have seen uh, the short biograph of Thoradat. Okay, let's move on to the stanza 1. Like a huge python winding round and round, the rugged trunk intended deep with scars, up to its very summit near the stars, a creeper climbs in whose embraces bound, no other tree could live but gallantly the giant wears the scarf and flowers are hung in crimson clusters all the boughs among whereon all day are gathered bird and bee and oft at nights the garden overflows with one sweet song that seems to have no close sung darkling from our tree while men repose. Now let us discuss the stanza line by line. See already we have seen our cashew in a tree. See it is a tree kind of a tree which uh, she had at her home in, uh, in West Bengal. And now you see first line like a huge python winding round and round. If you want to understand this line you have to go to the fourth line that is a creeper climbs. Then only you will understand the, uh, the, uh, the previous three lines. Like a huge python winding round and round. What is python? Python a type of large snake. Okay. What do you mean by winding? Winding means complete turn. Okay. Now what is looks like a python? This creeper looks like a python. Okay. How the snakes takes a complete turn of a animal or a human being when before eating a person that is called winding complete turn. Now what is the python here? The creeper is python. The creeper, what do you mean by a creeper? It is a plant which climbs on the tree. So this particular creeper climbs as if the python winding round and round. What is round, uh, rounding round and the rugged trunk? What do you mean by rugged? Rugged means uneven and not smooth. What do you mean by trunk? Trunk means the upper part between the root and the branches of the tree. Okay, in between the part of the tree is called trunk. What do you mean by intended? Intended means unevenly cut. Okay, deep with scars. Scars means what? Wound. Now, what is the meaning of this? When the creeper climbed the tree, it was so tight on the tree, it made uneven on the tree. 
that means the trunk the particular trunk part is made uneven and intended means what unevenly cut so since the creeper was so tied to the tree that made a scars scars means wound on the tree so up to its very submit near the stars so the creepers were what submit what do you mean by submit submit means peak star means you know it okay star where uh, where can you see stars you can see on the sky so now the creep uh, this creeper climbed to the submit which means the highest point what do you mean by peak the highest point of a uh, uh, position is called a submit so this creeper climbs to the submit and near the stars it's a like a uh, exaggeration okay so now what happened this creeper climbed to the top it looks like a, it looks like a python okay and th that particular creeper made rugged which is uneven okay that made scars wound now let's move on to the fifth line no other tree could leap see if it uh, since the casuarina tree is there it lived because it has uh, uh, very much strength to bear any kind of uh, thing and this particular creeper was so strong if this particular creeper climbed on other trees the tree might have died but here what happened since the casuarina tree is so powerful very strong it did not die it 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 could live that's what they say next but gallantly the giant wear the scarf and flowers are hung what do you mean by gallantly gallantly means bravely or heroically okay how the creepers climbed gallantly the giant wears the scarf what is the scarf usually we wear this scarf during the winter season okay now this giant refers to the casuarina tree okay the tree wears scarf see uh, during the winter season we wear scarf to prevent this cold this particular creeper looks like a scarf okay this creeper climbed on the tree okay it's like on the neck that's what they compare here the giant wear the scarf the the tree wears a scarf what is a scarf here creeper is called a scarf and flowers are hung so in the tree the flowers are hung the uh, how are the flowers in crimson clusters what do you mean by crimson crimson means a deep red what do you mean by clusters clusters means group okay so the flowers are in group in which color deep red all the boughs among what do you mean by boughs boughs means form branch of a tree branch of a tree is called boughs okay now what happened where are the flowers hung in between among the boughs in which color crimson how how do they look they look clusters where on all day are gathered bird and bee so on the casuarina tree all the day bird and bee gathered and of at night the garden overflow so at night there is a overflow so what is the overflow here next line with one sweet song that seems to have no close so here in the garden during night what in by oft oft means often okay so here often at night in the garden there is a overflow what is a overflow sweet song one particular song overflows in the garden so that particular song as no end that seems to have no close close means no end so in the every in the garden every night we hear a song which which is sweet that has no end sung darkling from our tree while men repose that particular song is sung darkling what do you mean by darkling in the dark okay the song is sung in the dark where where the song comes from the song comes from our tree what is our tree our tree is our casuarina tree okay the song come from our tree which is a casuarina tree while men repose what do you mean by repose repose means a state of rest or sleep during the night men what do you mean by men men refers to both men and women 
okay so what do the what do the men and women do during night they sleep so here while men and repose while people sleep at night a sweet song is heard from our cashew nut tree during darkling okay so in this stanza what do we see we see a description about cashew nut tree okay so let me summarize once again so the the python the creeper it looks like a python that is uh, winding round and round that made scars on the tree and that particular creeper climbed to the submit okay next creeper climbs embraces the bound embraces means what embraces means uh, hugging hugging the tree what is hugging creeper hugging the tree okay so if it is some other tree that would that uh, that would die but in the case of cashew nut tree it lived okay so here another comparison the tree is compared to where's the scarf the scarf is compared to the creeper okay so the giant the tree wears a scarf what is the scarf here creeper okay so there are flowers hung they are in crimson clusters okay so they during the night there is a beautiful song is sung and uh, while men repose okay so that's all about the stanza one now let's see poetic devices in the first line like a huge python winding round and round is simile okay there is a comparison between python and the creeper what is zoomorphism zoomorphism is a term comparison uh, given to a animal term okay animal term is given to plant okay for example uh, python is a animal term creeper is a plant okay so here the python animal term is compared to the creeper that is a plant so it is called zoomorphism next hyperbole what is hyperbole hyperbole is a exaggeration what is here exaggeration what is exaggerated here here stars how could a how could a creeper reach stars so it is a exaggeration so that is why it is called a hyperbole next is personification okay what is compared here where's the scarf okay what is the personification human quality is given to uh, living or non living is called personification okay so now it is compared here this scarf usually human wear scarf okay tree never wear never wear scarf okay so that particular human comparison given to the tree next is imagery so here what is imagery crimson cluster is imagery okay so uh, that's all about the stanza one in the first stanza we discussed how our cash in a tree looks like Toradat gave a clear description how our cash in a tree looks like in the second stanza she recalls an incident which happened in her childhood days let us discuss the second stanza now when first my casement is wide open thrown at dawn my eyes delighted on it rest sometimes and most in winter on its crest a gray baboon sits statue like alone watching the sunrise while on lower boughs his puny offspring leap about and play and far and near kohilas hail the day unto their pastures went our sleepy cows and in the shadow on the broad tank cast by their hoar tree so beautiful and vast the water lilies spring like snow in mast now let us see the first line when my first casement is wide open thrown what do you mean by casement casement is a type of window that is fixed on one side and opens like a door it's not like a mere uh, small window it's like a, a door a very big window okay what she does she opened wide open thrown which means she opened uh, this casement when did she open at dawn what do you mean by dawn early morning when she opened that window uh, casement my eyes delighted on it rest 
her eyes delighted what do you mean delighted delighted means enjoyed she enjoyed seeing the sight what is the sight she saw sometimes and most in winter on his crest what do you mean by crest a ridge highest point now what is this it refers to it refers to casuarina tree when she opened the casement which means a wider wider window she saw this tree casuarina tree sometimes and most in winter that was the winter season and she saw on the top of the crest, top of the tree what do you mean by crest crest means the highest point so on the top of the tree casuarina tree she saw a grey baboon sits statue like alone what do you mean by baboon baboon means a type of large monkey found in africa and asia okay it is a very big monkey uh, what is the color of the monkey gray so gray baboon sits like a statue statue like so on the top of the casuarina tree this baboon sits like a statue what did do watching the sunrise what did the baboon do watching the sunrise so baboon uh, was watching the sunrise while on the lower boughs what happened on the lower boughs boughs means what a branch of a tree we saw it is puny what do you mean by puny puny means small okay puny means small offspring what do you mean by offspring offspring means son or daughter or hair hair okay leap about and play now what happened when she opened the casement she saw a particular incident and she enjoyed her eyes enjoyed the incident now what did she see she saw a grey baboon sat like a statue so what did the baboon do it was watching sunrise okay so lower boughs so below the lower branch the puny was there the daughter or son of the baboon was there what did the puny do leap about and play so it was ju jumping and playing around the tree and far and near kohilas ail the day what do you mean by kohilas kohilas means a type of bird similar to cuckoo so it, that, that uh, looks like a, exactly like a cuckoo bird what does look a kohilas so far and near so from far and near kohilas come and welcome the day what do you mean by hail hail means welcome so what did the kohilas do kohilas welcome that particular day and pa unto their pastures went our sleepy cows what do you mean by pastures let us see the meaning of pasture pastures open field with grass so pastures means open field with the green grass so what do you mean by wind wind means stroll stroll means what move so what was moving sleepy cows so cows were moving on the pastures which means the green field on the green field the sleepy cows were moving why did the cow move why did the cow very sleepy because it is a dawn already we saw in the second line it is a dawn early morning so in the early morning cows were very sleepy okay so they were moving around the green pastures and in the shadow on the broad tank cost okay now there is a tank what in by tank here it is a small lake so in the shadow there is a somewhat already we saw it is a early morning in the early morning we have a partially day and darkness okay so that's why they say shadow okay in somewhat uh, darker in a shadow mood the broad tank cost so there is a small tank is there near the casuarina tree by that hoar tree what do you mean by hoar tree hoar tree means white frost deposits on the tree see frost means what the frozen ice is called frost so now what happened by the tree so that on the tree the hoar tree there were a frost ice were there on the tree that looks so beautiful and vast what do you mean by vast vast means in large and wide okay so what was there in vast 
the hoar tree so on the tree the snow was snow was in a freezing condition which means a frost okay the frost was filled with filled on the tree that looks so beautiful water lilies spring like a snow and mast what do you mean by en mast en mast means a mast mast means what gathered gathered in a large so what was gathered snow snow like a snow en mast so how the snow was gathered around the water lily spring spring means what blowing okay now let us see what happened here so the cows were very sleepy there there was there, there was a tank small tank so beside the tank there was a hoar tree okay that uh, hoar tree means a tree filled with the frost that looked so beautiful and vast so wide open wide uh, it was so wide that looked so beautiful and in the in the tank which means in the small tank small lake there were water lilies in between the tank and that spring like how like a snow en mast okay so this water lilies were in white in color okay so that look like a snow gathered snow en mast okay so here what happened thoradath explains an incident when she opened the casement she saw a incident a scenery which her eyes delighted enjoyed okay so what was the incident a baboon grey baboon was sitting on the top watching the sunrise on the lower boughs puny the small baboon was sitting and uh, leaping jumping and playing here and there and from far and near kohilas uh, came and welcomed the day and uh, what happened the sleepy cows sleepy cows were moving around the pastures and in the small tank uh, sorry broad tank okay very wide open tank there were hoar tree very frozen the frost tree was there that looks so beautiful and between the uh, tank there were water lilies sp- blowing like a snow en mast okay now let us discuss the poetic device so in the fourth line a gray baboon sits statue like alone this is a simile why it is called simile there is a comparison okay between gray baboon and the statue that's why it is a simile in the last line you see the water lily spring like a snow en mast okay here simile why it is simile because water lilies are compared to the snow that's why it is a simile okay that's all about the second stanza in the first stanza we saw the description of our cashew nut tree but not because of its magnificence dear is the cashew nut to my soul beneath it we have played though years may roll oh sweet companions loved with love intense for your sakes shall the tree be ever dear blend your images it shall arise in memory till the hot tears blind my eyes what is that dirge like murmur that i hear like the sea breaking on a single beach it is a tree's lament and eerie speech that happily to the unknown land may reach now let us discuss what she is trying to say how she is so dear to the cashew nut tree is revealed in this particular stanza but not because of its magnificence and she said it is a very strong that lived in spite of creeper crust it so what do you mean by magnificence magnificence means grandeur what do you mean grandeur grandeur means grand very big so she loved the cashew nut tree not because of magnificence not because of it is very grandeur because dear is a cashew nut tree to my soul see it is very dear to the soul dear to my soul thoro that soul not because of magnificence grandeur then why she is so why it is so dear to thorodath she says i loved it and it is very dear to me because it is not magnificent okay she says dear is a cashew nut even to my soul she says because its magnificence 
I loved it not because of its magnificence because I loved it because we played with with the tree beneath it we have played though years may roll what in by roll roll mean turnover pass over years passed away what do you mean beneath beneath means underneath so she says we played who whom does this we refer to this uh, we refers to her siblings and her companions so she recalls we played under the tree long ago years passed so sweet companions loved with the love intense what do you mean by intense intense means very close i and all other companions loved the tree love with intense very much very closely we loved the tree that is why we are very dear to the tree not because of it is magnificence for your sake shall the tree be ever dear what is this your sake so this your sake refers to companions okay so for your sake shall the tree be ever dear ever dear means let it be immortalized okay what do you mean immortalize live forever so this particular tree has no end so thorodath says that i have made the tree to live for long through this particular poem our kashwarina tree though the tree may die but the memories of the tree will never die that is why she says for your sake shall the tree be ever dear i will make the tree to live forever blend with your images it shall rise what do you mean by blend blend means mixed mix with your images so remember the all the memories that we played together beneath the kashwari tree and blend with your images so mix the all the images it shall arise so that the tree may arise so it may so the tree may live for long in memory till the hot tears blind my eyes so in memory so when i think about the kashwari tree the hot tears blind my eyes blind my eyes so when i think about the kashwari tree uh, the tears come out of my eyes and uh, that particular tears blind me that's what she says so whenever she remembers the kashwari tree she gets tears what is the hot tears it means at the present moment whenever she thinks of tree she shed the tears that blinds her eyes what is that dirge like murmur that i hear what in by dirge like dirge like means mournful sorrowful so she says there is a murmur murmur means a sound kind of a sound i hear the sound is what a dirge like like a mournful very sad very sorrowful sound i hear what is that sound i hear very very sad song here what is that she she asks like the sea breaking on a shingle beach what in the shingle shingle means a rocky so you, you can see in the sea okay the waves comes and hits the rock and makes noise that particular noise is compared to the murmur of the tree so now she is in france the tree is in india okay the the kashwarana tree makes a lament she cries okay the tree cries that particular lament is heard by the poetess okay so here like the sea breaking so when the sea breaks on the shingle there is a much of noise and she question what is that noise i hear in the next line she answers it is the tree's lament that there is the noise of the tree's lament which means cry of the tree an eerie speech what do you mean by eerie eerie means frightened or fearful speech since thorodath is in france is uh, far away from kashwari tree the kashwari tree cries and laments for thorodath and it, it is so fearful that she is away from thorodat now that happily to unknown land may reach what is this happily happily means by chance to the unknown land may reach 
So now unknown land, what do you mean by unknown land? Which is not known. Okay. So the tree, I have written our cash over in a tree to know about this particular cash over in a tree. The people who do not know about cash over in a tree will know through my poem. That's what he say that aptly to the unknown land may reach. This particular poem may reach to the unknown land and that people will know about the cash over in a tree. So in this particular uh, stanza, it is very emotional, very intense. She re recalls her own sweet memories with the companions. Okay. So she says, I am very dear to the tree because not magnificence, because we played under the tree. We, we means here the siblings and relatives, all the sweet companions played under the tree and we loved very intensely. And she says to the friends and uh, brothers, blend, mix your all your images so that the tree may live for long. And whenever I think about the tree, I get tears, the tears blind my eyes and I hear a noise that is a dirge like murmur. I hear a very sad song, that particular sad song comes from where? The sea breaking like a shingle beach. So when the she comes and eats on the uh, rock that makes a noise. So I hear a such kind of noise. What is that noise she asks? So that noise is trees lament, trees crying since Thorodhati is not there. Okay, she's that tree is so fearful and here that aptly to the unknown marriage. This particular poem, through this poem, Kashur in a tree is known to the unknown land. Okay, so that's all she describes about Kashur in a tree.